Uh, firstly, I want to say that uh, today at two o'clock in uh, our institute will be some talk and I must go a little bit earlier. So, what do we have uh, uh, now in our course? So we defined this, uh, this blackboard is quite <laughs> we defined uh, this tensor called Riemann tensor, just to remind all this, all these notations shortly. So this is a tensor that uh, can be defined uh, by using only Christoffel symbols. Christoffel symbols is uh, this thing. So they are defined by uh, GL over X. K plus DG KL over X I, uh, no, J minus DG IJ over the X. Wait a minute. L is summation. Uh, yes, not I. J, K, K over L, yes. Um, so the main object that uh, you want to find in Riemannian geometry or in general relativity is a metric. Metric is a generalization of a scalar product. So you consider some high dimensional manifold in Riemannian geometry. And you want to find to define some metric on it. It means that you should have scalar product at any uh, tangent uh, space of on your manifold. Uh, and uh, we some prescribed uh, we some prescribed characteristics or some. Uh, conditions on a curvature. This is um, very uh, very well known problems. There are a lot of problems in Riemannian geometry but the main object you usually find it, it is metric. There are different other objects on a general Riemannian manifold which usually connects somehow with this metric. Uh, probably I will tell tell you some something about that. But in our case, our uh, our manifold that we uh, studying is a space time. So locally, at least locally, this is R four. Actually, it is with time coordinate and three space coordinates and actually this uh, scalar product should have form 
well, its uh, matrix should be this one, yes. So what this minus means, it means that, for example, if you um, write uh, your metric in this form, it will look like that. So this is the space metric, this is time coordinate minus minus and C is a Mm, C is a speed of light and for example if you have a photon uh, you should know that its uh, velocity velocity in the time space of course uh, will have length zero yes so the velocity of a photon is equal to the speed of light and uh, so you see if you will divide this element by dt squared you will exactly have minus c squared plus uh, module of v v is the speed of your photon squared yes and exactly if this is zero, then you have a photon. If you have some massive particle, uh, it means that its speed should be strictly less than, than the speed of light. This is one of the axioms of the special, uh, um, special relativity. And uh, this, this element should be uh, should be less than zero yes well and so on and there is some <coughs> tachyons but never mind okay so what we are looking for we are looking for matrix on a time space it means that locally uh, if you will uh, consider uh, this your metric you consider its matrix the matrix of this metric and you find uh, its uh, eigenvalues you should have one negative eigenvalues value and three positive eigenvalues uh, then this metric should satisfy Einstein equations. This is the following. R i j R i j is a Ricci tensor and it is a convolution of a Riemannian tensor. So this is, if you will have the summation of, by that indices, you will have the Ricci tensor. Then uh, this tensor will be symmetrical. So uh, here you will have R divided by 2, where R is a scalar curvature. And this is the, the summation of rich tensor. Oh, well, mm, you should multiply it by a metrical tensor to get the right convolution. Yeah. So I J I J. I think that. Okay, this is scalar curvature, and uh, here you will have J J, and then you'll have impulse uh, energy impulse tensor T I K and this is constant is very small as you can see because of here this C mm. so basically it means that the gravity is much much weaker than Electrodynamics. 
Yes, this is exactly the Einstein equations. Einstein. Uh, okay. So uh, the main task is to find this metric which satisfies these equations. Uh, now, next, you should just um, imagine how difficult these equations are. So, today I want to talk about Schwarzschild metrics, metric, and some properties of this metric. But uh, I want you to remember that. Uh, how difficult to calculate all this, all these uh, tensors. Even in four-dimensional case, to find some analytical exact solution is not very, uh, not very easy task. So let us find some central symmetrical uh, solutions. What does it mean? It means that uh, in a space you have some massive point. It has some mass. Uh, and this point, it's uh, 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 it uh, generates some perturbation of the geometry of your space. So, for example, sun. Yes, you have a sun. This is very massive uh, body, and it uh, it curves your our space and space time. So, but we suppose that the sun is a ball. Yes, symmetrical ball with a big mass, and uh, we want to find the solutions that will be. Uh, central symmetric, yes? So if you will rotate, uh, this uh, metric won't change, yes? So uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that the metric should have this, this following form. as always is time. R is a radial coordinate, yes? So R is a coordinate in a space and this is simply the distance from you, your point where you want to calculate the deformation of the space to this massive particle. Okay, so what is that? Hmm? What is that? You see, this is two-dimensional metric, yes? On what this metric is defined? Hmm? Come on, this was uh, about a couple of months ago. In the in the some of the first lectures, theta and phi, yes, two angles. On what space you have two angles? Spherical what? Spherical coordinates. Spherical coordinates, yes. So R, phi, and theta they are the spherical coordinates. So, and we suppose that the, um, the, 
curvature at any point of your sphere is does not depend on on the angles yes so our, all our functions that we want to define somehow yes we want to find this all functions they depends only on radial coordinate radial coordinate in space and the time anything uh, these coordinates uh, they don't uh, uh, have meaning well you, you understood I think so because this uh, because we are looking for the uh, central symmetrical solutions so from the first point of view you might think that still you have a lot of functions that you want to to find but uh, uh, so one two three four functions of two variables and you um, should calculate all these tensors blah 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 and find all these uh, equations on these functions actually you can do it especially if you have some modern uh, mathematical program because in all modern mathematical packets for example maple do you use do you know this just some advertisement yeah. I use when I uh, calculate some big equations I use this program so basically in in this program there are a lot of uh, procedures and functions that can help you to calculate all this uh, mm, all this uh, tensors curvatures and so on analytically of course mm, not uh, not simulating not uh, modeling and so on just analytically so using only formulas Okay, but uh, these uh, these functions they are too many, uh, and uh, we will suppose we will suppose firstly that this function is zero. Why we can do this? This is very simple, simple question. If you know what is what is uh, the the surfaces of the second order do you know what is for example hyperbolic paraboloid yes yes so for example if you have uh, equation z equals to x squared minus y squared yes this is this is hyperbolic paraboloid. And it looks like a saddle. Yeah. This is some canonical form of its uh, equation. But also you can write down this, for example, as x y and probably multiplied by what by two yeah yes yes why because this matrix minus one minus one is equivalent to this matrix yes so this is one minus one and that is this matrix so you by some rotating well, this is a very simple task from the first course in geometry in university. Uh, so you can kill this thing, yes, to rotate. So we will forget about this term. Okay, what next? This is simple. Uh, so of course it's it's not uh, absolutely the same because we have uh, 
different scalar products at any point. Yes, at, at any space, uh, ten, tangent space, you have different scalar products. And you should do that, uh, you should kill the, this coefficient not at uh, one point, but at any point of your space, because at any point of your space, you should rotate these coordinates R and T such that this uh, this squared plus this uh, pro this uh, product of dr and dt should should be zero. This coefficient should be uh, vanish. But this is also can be done. Okay. Okay. What else? Uh, also, we want to um, um, to make some condition on th this function. Uh, for example, just forget about time for a moment and write down uh, this uh, this look at this space metric. Yes, this this part of the of our metric is a. Uh, is a part that de that is defined on only on the space, yeah. So uh, I will remind you how does ah what ah you mean yes, but imagine that uh, for example that you have not four dimensional time space, but you have a three-dimensional space and the metric on it, it depends on the time. So you, you have some uh, evolving family of a matrix. So just, just for a second. Uh, how does usually a metric on a three-dimensional Euclidean space looks like if you consider these uh, spherical coordinates? This is something that uh, sits here, and uh, this is this is the metric that depends on two-dimensional sphere. Yeah, exactly th that that is written down here. So what you should uh, write here to get the the flat metric on a R three. What function of R? You have flat space, only space, without time, flat, three-dimensional flat Euclidean space. And you consider the spherical coordinates on it. If you consider the Euclidean coordinates, the, this the, the metric uh, of the flat in flat space with Euclidean coordinates. But you consider a different coordinate system. It means you have radial, a coordinate and two angles, yeah? So, basically you split your three-dimensional system by the family of spheres, yes? So we have some center of your coordinate system and the family of spheres, yes? So at every sphere you have a standard uh, spherical metric. Uh, but what on what uh, function you should multiply this spherical metric to get the flat metric on the three-dimensional space. Come on. What function of R should you should write here? This is very important too because what? No, no, no. This will you should multiply this uh, metric on two-dimensional sphere. That one uh, by some function depends only on R. What should be this function 
such that all this metric will be the flat metric on R3. Some conjectures. What function of R do you know? What? Spherical coordinate. Spherical coordinate system. What functions do you know? So R cos theta or sin theta. What? R cos theta. R cos theta? No, no, not without without these angles. So remember this. This is important. So this will be R2. I think I explained it in one of the lectures because um, it is important. For example, you have uh, two coordinates, R and angle, for example, theta. If you will define this metric, this metric will be metric on R2. It means that you have a radial coordinate and angle coordinate. And uh, what, um, what this R means? It means that the, the length of the circle with radius R equals exactly to 2 pi R. Yes? When you integrate, for example, you, uh, it means what? If you fix some r, yes, you fix it. And you want to calculate the length of this circle. It means that you should integrate this, uh, 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 this is exactly the metric, so it is exactly the, the uh, uh, elementary, Elementary, elementary length of a curve, yes? So you, to calculate the length of the curve, you should integrate the, the square root of this, because this is exactly the, the square of the uh, module of a speed, of a, vol of a of a velocity of the curve. So you integrate r d theta squared, this squared, from 0 to, to pi. So exactly, you fixed this radius and you integrate this uh, element, length element, um, f for the whole angle from 0 to, to pi. And you will exactly have r to pi, yes? So dr is zero because r is fixed, and you will have this exactly the length of our circle. But uh, if you will write down, for example, sine, it means the that the length of a circle for non-zero r will be less than 2 pi r and you will get what you will get exactly this sphere yes so you have northern pole and you have this this is the the radius yes and you consider this concentrical uh, circles and the length of the circle will be strictly less than 2 pi r. If it, and this will be spherical geometry. The, the, its curvature will be plus 1. Uh, this, the, the curvature of the plane is 0, of course. And the length of the circle, it will grow slower than the uh, than in case of uh, Euclidean geometry and if you will put here um, 
hyperbolic sign, you will get the hyperbolic geometry or Lobachevsky geometry and its curvature will be negative and the length of a circle will be strictly uh, bigger than, than 2 pi r. Yes, and you should also imagine that because here in this case you have something like saddle, yes, which curvature is negative and you see if you will Calculate if you will consider this this circle. Yes. So imagine that the length of this circle that goes down, then up, then then up, down once again, then up, then down. Yes. It is obvious that the length of the circle is is bigger than two pi r. Yes. If you have a plane, this circle this circle have length 2 pi r and if you have a saddle then the length of the circle will be bigger than 2 pi r because it goes up, down and so it, it's uh, it is bigger well but what is important important is that this function if you will consider its Taylor expansion will have form uh, R squared plus something else. This something else uh, will define a curvature. Mm. So uh, we will just put that k is equal to R squared. It means that uh, if we will consider Mm, this spatial part of our metric, uh, the, then the length of the circle with radius r will be equal uh, to r, uh, to 2 pi r. Okay? So we just put it to uh, have some natural uh, space metric. We want uh, to have some geometrically reasonable yes metric to not to recalculate to renorm these lengths of the circles. So it means that the lengths. So we have once again we have space time yes we have time coordinate and radial uh, coordinate in space. We can put uh, uh, this condition on function r just uh, mm, to. Mm, to all the circles in our space, so this is for example this origin, yes, this R, and we uh, uh, draw this circle in our space with radius R, and we demand that the length of the circle should be 2 pi R, and, and it means that this function K should be equal to R squared. So basically Uh, basically we have two functions two functions of two variables uh, and, and wait a minute and So uh, we have two function of two variables. Uh, let's re uh, rewrite this metric to be a little bit more convenient to calculate all that stuff. So this is metric on the sphere minus e in the power of lambda dr squared. So now we have we see that this part is uh, strictly positive, yes? So uh, I always told that there will be some uh, interchanging of the signs. So either that or this. So never mind. 
So it will be always either plus, minus, 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 either minus, plus, plus, plus. So what is important that this is always positive and this is always negative because exponent is uh, doesn't change its signs. We have two functions, nu and lambda. They both depend on r and t. This is speed of light. This is r and uh, yes. So and uh, we choose these exponents just to make our equations a little bit simpler and uh, because this function doesn't change signs, because if you have some changing of signs, you have some problems. And you should consider different domains. In one domain you have one signature of your metric, in other domain you have other signature of your metric, and this is some headache. Okay. So means that g11 is exponent of lambda, g22 is r squared, g33 is r squared sine squared theta, and g00 is minus e in the power of nu. And this is for what coordinates? The space coordinates is uh, uh, is standard is it is radius and two angles and uh, zero coordinate is time multiplied by speed of light. Well, you should always remember in this um, Lorentz geometry about speed of light. Okay. So next, next we calculate all, all this stuff. This is very long story. You understand, yeah? How many components of Riemannian tensor do you have in four-dimensional space? A lot. A lot, yeah? Uh, even with all these symmetries, I don't remember how many. 18, I don't remember actually. Never mind. So you should calculate all the components of the uh, Riemann tensor. Then you should calculate its convolution and get the the Ricci tensor. Before, of course, you should calculate all the Christoffel symbols. How many Christoffels do we have in this case? So four up and uh, 40, I think, yeah, in general. Yeah, I, J, K. I is, there is no symmetries with I, but I goes from zero to one, two, three. So four, yeah? So four multiplied. How many in we have do we have here? So for every fixed i we have a symmetrical four by four matrix. Yes, in, in this is J and K. How many components in in four by four symmetrical matrix? Ten. Ten. Yeah. A one one. A two. Two, a three three, a four four. So we have four here, plus three here, plus two plus one. Four plus three plus two plus one is ten. Yeah. So forty, forty Christoffel symbols in general. Uh, so it's long story, and now it is better to use some mathematical programs to do all this stuff. Because, well, you understand that Schwarzschild, one century ago, it was some, although you understand that what you can, you should do is just differentiating. But there are a lot of work and you can do some mistakes and so on and so on. So I will skip all this hard work. Maybe I will show you on my uh, laptop 
how to use some procedures maybe sometime it will be useful for you to use this programs because actually it's uh, in modern mathematical uh, society it is absolutely unbelievable that someone will calculate all these equations by by hands okay so I'll write down only the Christoffel symbols so as usual dot uh, dot is the um, derivative along the d. dot is derivative along this uh, time multiplied by speed of light and prime is derivative along the radial coordinate um, gamma 1 1 1 gamma uh, new prime divided by 2 3 3 minus sine theta cosine theta gamma 0 1 1 divided by 2 exponent um, 2 to 1 minus r exponent Component gamma zero zero one new prime exponent gamma one two two and gamma one three three of course they are equal because this second and the third coordinates they, they are essentially they are equal on the sphere two angles three two three is called tangent theta gamma zero 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 So, this is all uh, non-zero Christoffel symbols. Uh, uh, so, you imagine how long... So, firstly, and notice, by the way, you should also remember that our metric depends only on two functions of two variables, yes? Instead of, instead of four function. And four only in the case when uh, you have diagonal metric, yes? On when some out of diagonal components are zero. In general, if, you, if your coordinate system is not orthogonal, then you have some additional components uh, out of diagonal in the metric yeah and all of these components in general should be should depend on all four coordinates so actually in general how many functions do you have uh, on four dimensional space time you have 10 functions depending on uh, four coordinates. Then you calculate all the Christoffel symbols. You have 40. And then you calculate all the com all components of the Riemannian tensor. Yeah? 
Uh, I will skip all that. And eventually, you will get the Einstein equations. So, uh, in general case, when you have 10 function of four variables, Einstein equations, they are well defined. So you have as much equations as you have uh, variables, yes? unknown functions. But if you will suppose that our metric has some special form, then probably you will have some additional equations. You have uh, um, the, the number of equations will be bigger than the number of uh, variables. You see, yes? Because you, you restrict, you consider some special form of your metric. So the, the Einstein equation, uh, the system of Einstein equations will be overdefined. Yeah? Mm. And it will be exactly the following. The same is to when three So, of course, it will be equal to 8 pi k c4 t33. So, what else? What is left? 8 pi 0, 0 component of the energy impulse tensor. Lambda prime divided by R minus one over the R squared and so already we see that we have three equations. Yes, for example, if we know this energy impulse tensor, we know how uh, what uh, electromagnetic field is in, in our space. We want to find uh, the gravity of our space and we already have three equations on two functions of two variables. Yes, this is lambda and nu. This is... Uh, uh, but what is uh, very good is that this no, it's on in the vacuum. Okay. Oh, but already you can see that uh, this system is uh, overdefined. Yes, because already we have three at least equations on two functions of two variables. The last one is to uh, one zero. And it will be equal to 
minus lambda lambda dot divided by r okay So we want to find some solutions in vacuum. In vacuum, it means that there is no uh, electromagnetism. If you will put zeros here, then it will turn out that this second, uh, second equation will be the sequence of uh, the third one and the, the first one. So you can find, you see, yeah? So if you will consider the case when uh, when your energy impulse tends uh, is zero, then you can differentiate this equation uh, by R to get the second prime and uh, the first one by uh, by time and then do some um, some interchanging and some arithmetical proofs and you will get that this equation will be the sequence of the first and the third. So actually this is some uh, some luck because in other ways you will have uh, equations partial nonlinear equations of the second order actually and this is a very standard situation when you um, find some some metrics you usually have some equations that looks like some x second prime plus something x first uh, prime usually squared plus something else plus something else equals zero. Mm. This is the standard uh, uh, form of uh, equation when you consider some uh, conditions on the curvature of your manifold. But in this case we, we are lucky. If you will put that our energy impulse tends to zero, we will get only these equations of first order, and this is very good. First order linear equations is can be integrated very quickly. There are the following. And the last one, it went uh, zero one component of energy impulse tensor is zero is that. So we have three equations on two variables, nu and lambda. And you can integrate it mm, very fast. Firstly, you notice that lambda does not depend on the time, yeah? Second, you uh, you sum first and the second equations and you get that nu prime plus lambda prime is zero. It means that nu plus lambda is some function on of t, yeah, of time. Uh, yes, of time. We will consider that this function is zero. Uh, why can we do th this? We can do th this because we have uh, some um, freedom when we 
can interchange R and T uh, coordinates. So we can consider this in as a coordinate R is some function of R and T. T prime is some function of R and T. And using the freedom of this, this interchanging uh, of our coordinates, we can put uh, this condition, we can consider this condition on, on this function f. Okay. Actually, it is enough to, to uh, find, to consider only the, the, the time to vanish the, that function. Okay. So, I have done this somewhere before. So, what is left? We think that we suppose that lambda equals minus nu and we have only one equation. Yeah. Yes, and by the way, this is uh, more or less uh, uh, native, uh, native thing to suppose that this function is zero. It means that all our functions in our metric will not depend on time. It means that the, that uh, for, what does it mean? It means that if you have some massive, massive particle, yes, the curvature of, of your space does not change in time. So the mass of the, your function doesn't change. So your time space is curved, but uh, this, uh, this curvature doesn't change in time. So if nothing happens, why the curvature should change, yeah? So it's more or less natural condition for, the, for this. Uh, okay, so we must integrate this equation. Well, it is easy to do. Uh, what do we have here? So, of course, we want to uh, divide uh, the uh, coordinates. What should we do? Yes, and then yes, I think it's correct. Then we integrate. And we get that, and we get that exponent of minus lambda is equal to some constant. So it is obvious, yes. Then we then we calculate this integral. It can be done. This is. Uh, logarithm r plus constant. This is something like that too. There will be some logarithm of exponent. And uh, eventually you will have this. 
Mm, actually, I can write it down. This integral is equal to minus logarithm uh, in the power of lambda minus one. So e minus minus lambda is equal to constant divided by r plus one. So we have this first equation, uh, first solution to the Einstein equations. It was found by uh, Schwarzschild almost, not already one century ago. Actually, yes, it was a year ago, there was a conference in Paris that uh, about some jubilee of uh, general relativity. So there was one century after, after all this. I was in Henri Poincaré Institute and had a, a, had a poster there. So there was a lot of great guys there. For example, the, the director of American Mathematical Society, Robert Bryant. Okay, so it means that this equation is really hard to solve, that uh, even 100 years there are some unsolved problems, so on. Okay. Uh, pardon. <laughs> so, firstly, we want to um, to um, to make this constant of integration be more concrete, and if you if we will. Uh, consider some um, limit limit to it means that when c goes to infinity yes when c goes to infinity what do we, we sh what should we have in our uh, metric we should get some newtonian physics yes so non relativistic non -relativi non relativistic physics and in, in this case, uh, in, uh, in this case, we will understand that the constant that was there should be equal to this minus 2k gravitational constant mass and uh, speed of light. And by the way, this 1 divided by r is just exactly the potential, the, the potential of the, in the Newtonian law. Remember, yes? So when you, uh, when you um, uh, calculate the, the trajectories of uh, uh, celestial bodies, you find that the potential of for the Newtonian equations should be one divided by r. Okay. So this metric is the following. D T squared. Minus R metric on the sphere minus dr divided by one minus two km m 
c squared r. Yes, I think it's correct. Yes, we just multiplied by c squared that was mm -hmm, here. And yeah, this is Schwarzschild metric. I'm not sure that I will write his surname correct, correctly because something like that. Schwarzschild. Yes. Yeah, you, you, you have. S, C, H, Z, and all the combinations. You know this uh, Friedrich Nietzsche? Friedrich Nietzsche. Do you know this guy? He was a philosopher. Uh, well, I think there are about five letters in, uh, in, in his surname. Nie, T. Z, C, R, somewhere here you should put S. I don't know where exactly. Okay, but Schwarzschild is uh, well known, so it was first solution for this equation. Uh, it does not depend, depend on time, and actually Einstein, as I understand, uh, think that this is uh, this is true that our universe it doesn't change but there you probably know this Hawking yes theorem that there was a big bang and actually the geometry of our universe universe changes it, it is uh, uh, enlarged it became bigger and bigger Okay, but this solution just for single, single massive uh, and central symmetric body that uh, uh, make our space a little bit curvy. And you see that when R goes to infinity, it means that you go far away from your body. Uh, this metric goes to standard a Minkowski metric, yes, it goes to dx, dy, dz. Yes, but, but in, in uh, spherical coordinates. So very far away from, from this massive point, you have just flat space. It is, it is very natural because at, uh, at infinity nothing happens. You doesn't feel at infinity that there is some perturbations of your space. Okay. So, what else? Yes. Uh, this constant, I'll put down this, is called gravitation radius. This radius, you can see, the, it is really small, yeah? And actually every gravitating body has this radius, yes? V2, some radius, have some radius. Uh, but uh, mm, it is really small. And what does happen when when you have a ball and it is uh, it is mass so big that the radius of a ball as its physical radius yes became became smaller than the gravitation radius what do you have once again you have very very heavy ball yeah it it curves uh, your space a lot 
Yes, because it has very big mass. So, so big that the radius of a ball, yes, as a, bo as a body, became smaller than its gravitation radius. What do you have here? Hmm? Black, hole. Black hole. So if your gravitation radius is bigger than the radius of your body, yes, as, 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 as a physical, so you have some ball. In a, in a space, empty space, and it is so heavy that its uh, gravitation radius is bigger than its radius as a body, then this is a black hole. Okay, what else? Some properties, for example, we see that, uh, I've erased it, that G11 is strictly bigger than 1. Yeah? It's strictly bigger. So, if you have this is your gravitating point, and this is a radial axis. And for example, if you will integrate this thing from 0 to r, g11, dr, some r1. So having this estimate, what will it be? It will be bigger than R1, yeah? So the actual length between this gravitating point and the, this point in coordinates, this distance equals to uh, R1, yes? Yeah? So the coordinate of the system is R1. But the distance should be calculated by using this uh, formula, yeah? Mm, so any another coordinates is fixed. So we see that uh, this uh, distance is bigger than R1, yeah? But the length of the circle, this circle, Uh, is strictly equal to 2 pi r1. This is because our function k was equal, was e strictly equal to r1. So, um, for example, if we will for forget about time in our metric and consider only the space, the space part of a metric, what curvature should it have from the from the, this from this point of view? If you have the radius bigger, uh, the distance bigger than radius. What? No, no, I mean that uh, that uh, length, okay, let's, length of a circle, a circle, and radius, radius of a circle. So this is almost 2 pi r1, yeah? This is strictly equal to 2 pi r1. And this is bigger than r1. So this is... Uh, what should put a... What inequality should be here? This, yeah? And uh, the equality um, is in... Is when... R goes to infinity. It is 
easy to understand, yeah? So, um, we see that uh, uh, this fracture is uh, uh, less than 2 pi. Then it is, uh, it is more or less natural to suppose that the geometry of our space without time is, has some positive curvature, yeah? Just like on surface, or uh, just like on, on a um, sphere. So I, I already draw this picture that the length of the of the circles on the sphere is uh, less than two pi r, yeah. And this gives you some some idea that that our space can be a very very big three-dimensional sphere, yeah? But of course it is not true because it is true only near, near the gravitating particle, yeah? And when you go to infinity, when R goes to infinity, you still have this flat space. So the picture is the following. Near near massive point, you have some domain with positive curvature, yeah? But when you go to infinity, the curvature begins more and more equals to zero, yes? So somewhere near, near sun, the curvature of the space is positive, but if, if you go to infinity, the, the geometry will be flat of our space. So we can consider our universe as a flat space, yes, with uh, some small domains with positive curvature near the stars or galactics. Uh, it depends on your interests, okay? So, okay, I want to stop. Then I, uh, next time, I will tell about Mm, the, do you know about uh, this Mercury? Th there was a problem in the end of 19th century, one of the greatest problems in physics. They, they said that we know already everything, almost, but there is some strange situation with Mercury. It, it's, it's orbit, so you have Sun, Yes, and you have Mercury. So the first pl planet, the nearest planet near the Sun, yeah? And from the Newtonian equations, you should know that the, this trajectory should be ellipse, yeah? And it doesn't, doesn't change. For example, from the Newtonian theory, it, it, you, you can get that the ellipse is the, is the same. So, century after century, thousand millions uh, years, for example, Earth should rotate on the same ellipse. But it's not true, actually. And they found it that, for example, for uh, you have Sun here, so th it is in the focus of this ellipse, you have another focus of the ellipse, and you have this axis. Uh, uh, link it in this focus and that, and it was founded that this axis is rotating about 42 seconds, I think, 42 seconds for 100 years. I think like that, something like that. Very, very small, but still even it is it is true, yeah, and they could not explain this, and they saw what what's happening. Yeah, so general relativity could explain this rotation, and we will show how. So the using this general relativity and the perturbation of Newtonian, Newtonian solution for the, for, of the motion, you can calculate this, this rotation of Mercury ellipse. 
more or less. So, and there is, of course, the, 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 the light goes not as line, but it curves like slightly. And you can estimate using also the general uh, relatively this angle. So we will talk about this later. Okay, thanks. Good day.